The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, good morning. Today, we're gonna cover section 9.5 and then tonight you'll do 9.5 in the chapter review. Tomorrow we'll review and then there'll be a test on Monday. And then Tuesday is advising day. So there'll be no classes or Zoom meetings or office hours or anything on Tuesday. And Monday, of course, you'll be taking your test. So there won't be a class Zoom meeting on Monday. You'll just take your test. Okay, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to ask otherwise. We're going to go ahead and get started here. And first of all, I have some questions from a student that emailed me. This is from section 9.3, and this is number 10. And it says the following. Simplify the radical expression. The variable represents a positive real number. OK. So that means we don't have to worry about absolute value bars. And this is what we have. We have four times the cube root of negative 16 a cubed. Now, since we're taking a cube root, it doesn't matter whether the variables are positive or negative, right? Remember, you can't take an even root of a negative number, but you can take an odd root, okay. So first of all, let's take a look at negative 16. That's negative one times 16, which is negative one times four times four, or negative one times two times two times two times two, or negative one times two to the fourth power. Okay, so that's like the prime factorization of it. I'm gonna rewrite that as negative one times two cubed times two to the one power. So now I've got four times the cube root of negative one times two cubed times two times a cubed. So let's take this a piece at a time. The cube root of negative one would be negative one. So outside, along with this four that's already there, we're gonna have a negative one. The cube root of two cubed is two outside. The cube root of two is gonna stay inside because I can't do that, it's irrational. And the cube root of a cubed, let's see here, is a outside. So then I've got the cube root of two left inside. So I've got negative eight a times the cube root of two. Now, the student that asked about this had everything incorrect except they didn't have the negative sign. So be careful with that. If you've got a negative sign, it doesn't just disappear. Also, in your final answer, you don't want a negative sign inside. You need to take it outside if at all you can. All right, anyway, that's problem number 10. Any questions from anyone on that before we go on to the next one? Okay, coming up next, this is also from section 9.3, and this is number 14. Simplify the radical expression. The variable represents a positive real number. And we have, let's see here, the sixth root of seven y to the 12th over 64. So we have a fraction inside of a radical. So we can separate this into two radicals, one for the numerator, seven y to the 12th, one for the denominator, 64. If I could have reduced this first, I would have, but there's nothing I can do to reduce it, okay? So that's why I went ahead and split it up. So now let's see, uh, on top, we could take the sixth root of y to the 12th, and that would give us y squared outside. And then I've still got the sixth root of seven inside, okay? In the denominator, 64 is eight times eight, which is two times two times two times two times two times two, which is two to the sixth power, okay? So we've got y squared sixth root of seven over the sixth root of two to the sixth would be a two outside. 
okay? And here again, the student had everything except this. They had somewhere over here, that Y squared is on the outside, okay? Any questions about that problem? All right, well, that was all the requests. Anything from you folks before we go on? Anybody? Okay, then we're gonna go on to section 9.5, which is solving radical equations. Okay, now let's say we have the following. We have the square root of x minus 10 equals one, okay? When we have an equation that has a radical, it's kind of like when we have an equation that has an absolute value. And that is if there's one radical term, we want to isolate it first. In this case, that one radical term is already isolated on the left side of the equation. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to square both entire sides, okay? The square root of x minus 10, the quantity squared becomes x minus 10 because the implied index of a two and the exponent of a two, those reduce out to give us x minus 10. On the right side of the equation, one squared is one, okay? Going on and solving it, we'll add 10 to both sides. So we get x equals 11. Let's check our work. If we have this original problem and we put 11 in the place of x, we get that, which is that, which is that. So it checks. Now, when we solve an equation by squaring both sides or by raising both sides to the same power, we can square both sides, cube both sides, etc. We always need to check our answers to see if they work because when you do that, it's possible to create what are called extraneous solutions, which are answers that don't work. And WebAssign will sometimes ask you to uh, find the answers and then say, does this one work? Is it extraneous? Which means it doesn't work, okay. But anyway, you always wanna check your answers on that. Any questions on this example before we go on to another example? Okay. Let's take a look at this one. We have the square root of 6x plus 1 equals 5. So just like the previous example, the, absolute, the uh, radical is already isolated. So we're going to square both sides. On the left side of the equation, we get 6x plus 1. On the right side of the equation, we get 25. Going on and solving for x, we'll subtract one from both sides of the equation. 6x is 24. Divide both sides by six, x equals four. And let's go back and check our work. So we're gonna have six times four plus one, five, the square root of 24 plus one, five, the square root of 25, five, five equals five, it checks. So there's our solution. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another one with a fraction involved. We have the square root of one half x plus three equals six. Again, the radical is isolated already. So we'll square both sides. On the left side of the equation, we get one half x plus three. On the right side of the equation, we get 36. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. 1 half x equals 33. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to clear the fraction on the left side. So x equals 66. It's supposed to be a 2 there. Okay, let's check our work. 1 half times 66 plus 3 would be 33 plus three, 36, six equals six, so it checks. Again, any questions on this process? 
Okay, let's take a look at this example. It says solve each equation, write all proposed solutions, cross out those that are extraneous. So basically, we're going to solve it. We'll come up with whatever solution or solutions we get, and then we'll check them. And if a solution doesn't work, then it is extraneous. And in the book, it says to cross it out in WebAssign. They'll have you label it. Okay. So we have this, the square root of 3x plus 5 equals 2. So now we need to isolate the radical. We'll do that by subtracting 5 from both sides of the equation. The square root of 3x equals negative 3. So now we'll square both sides. And we get 3x equals positive 9, right? Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 3. Let's check our work. So 3 times 3 plus 5 is 2. The square root of 9 plus 5 is 2. 3 plus 5 is 2. 8 equals 2. No, it doesn't. So this is extraneous, yes, and it doesn't work, okay? Now, you could have told that there would not be a workable solution just by looking at the problem, and I'll point that out in a minute, but in any case, I believe that WebAssign, even if you can see ahead of time it's not gonna work, they'll want you to find the possible solution. How do I know it wasn't gonna work? Let's go back here. To this equation before we squared both sides. Recall, you can't take an even root of a negative number. So for instance, you can't take a square root of a negative number. Likewise, when you take an even root, you can't get a negative answer. Oh, look at that. Oops. Right here, We've got the square root of something equals negative three. So already we can tell that's not gonna work, but they still might want you to go ahead and solve it using the, ordinary, the regular means and then checking to see that it doesn't work. Okay, uh, let's see here. For time, let's take another look at one. We've got this one, which is one equals two plus, the square root of 4x plus 75, okay? So I'm gonna isolate the radical by subtracting two from both sides. So now I get negative one equals the square root of 4x plus 75. And if you're awake, you're probably going, oh, this one's not gonna work either. You're right, because we've got a square root equals a negative number. But going on, we'll square both sides. We get one equals 4x plus 75 subtract 75 from both sides, negative 74 equals 4x, divide by four, x equals negative 74 fourths. I can reduce that down, x equals negative, what, 37 over two. I believe that's right. Yeah, because that'll reduce. So let's plug that in and see what happens. One equals two plus, the square root of four times negative 37 halves plus 75. One equals two plus uh, four times negative 37 halves. The four over two reduces to two over one. Two times negative 37 is negative 74. And then plus 75. One equals two plus the square root of one. One equals two plus one. One equals three. No. So this is extraneous and doesn't work. Okay, let's see here. Uh, all right, this says let f of x equal the fourth root of quantity 3x plus 1, okay? And then it says, for what value or values, depending, of x 
is f of x equal to four. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take four and substitute it in the place of f of x. So now our equation becomes this, four equals the fourth root of three x plus one. So I've got an equation with one radical. It's already isolated, only now I'm not going to square both sides. I'm gonna raise both sides to the fourth power because I'm taking a fourth root here, okay? On the left side, let's see, four times four is 16, times four is 64, times four is, I believe it's 256. Let's see here, four to the fourth power. So we get 256 equals, and the fourth root of three X plus one, all raised to the fourth power becomes three X plus one. So going on and solving for X, subtract one from both sides, we get 255 equals three X, divide both sides by three X equals, let's see, that's gonna be 85, I believe. Let's check our work. Let's see. So we'd have four equals the fourth root of three times 85 plus one. Four equals the fourth root of 255 plus one. Four equals the fourth root of 256. And if I take the fourth root of 256, I could do that on my calculator, remember? So I could put in what? Four and then the X root of 256. So let's see what happens. Four second X root of 256. And I get four. So four equals four. The solution checks. Questions there? All right. How about this one? Uh, let's see here. We have 2b plus 29 to the one third power equals three. So what am I gonna do to this problem? I've got the, well, the one third power, that's like the cube root, right? So that, that's sort of like a radical. So we've got it isolated, okay? Does anybody know what, what we need to do to this side? I mean, to this equation, to both sides? Anybody? Nobody wants to speak this morning. Okay, fine. Maybe you've all fallen asleep. Okay, so we're going to cube both sides. 2b plus 29 to the one third power. Cube, the one third and the three, the exponents get multiplied, so that becomes a one. So we get 2b plus 29 equals three cubed, which is 27, okay? We're gonna subtract 29 from both sides. 2b equals negative two, divide by two, b equals negative one. Let's see if that checks. So two times negative one plus 29 to the one third power equals three. Negative two plus 29 to the one third power equals three. 27 to the one third power equals three. 27 to the one third power, that's the cube root of 27. Three equals three, it checks, it checks. All right. Uh, let's say you have an equation with two radicals. The square root of m plus four equals the square root of two m minus five. In the case of one radical, you isolate. In the case of two radicals, you want them separated. You want them one on each side of the equation. Again, just like you would deal with absolute value equations. So now I'm going to square both sides, which gives me m plus four equals two m minus five. I'm gonna solve for m on the left side of the equation. So I'll subtract 2m from both sides. I get negative m plus four equals negative five. 
subtract four from both sides, negative m equals negative nine, divide both sides by negative one, m equals nine. Let's check our work. Let's see, it would be the square root of, that's a little bit too long here. Uh, the square root of nine plus four equals the square root of two times nine minus five. The square root of 13 equals the square root of 18 minus five. The square root of 13 equals the square root of 13. I don't even know what the square root of 13 is. It's like, let's see, uh, bigger than three and smaller than four, but I do know it's real. And I know that the square root of 13 equals the square root of 13. So it's gonna check my solution is correct. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at some formulas involving radicals. This says D equals 1.4 times the square root of H. We are to solve this for H, to solve each equation for the specified variable or expression. Now, there is one radical term in this equation, that is the 1.4 square root of h, okay? That's all the same term because the 1.4 is being multiplied, so it's part of that term. We need to solve for h. We can do this one of two ways. We can isolate the square root first, or we can square both sides first, okay? Anybody want to have a preference want me to do, or, or I'll just do it anyway? Nobody's talking this morning. What's that? I said square both sides. Okay, thank you, Cassandra. I'm glad someone else is alive there. I wasn't sure. Okay, so if we square both sides to start with, on the left side, we get d squared. On the right side, I'm gonna go over here. We've got 1.4 square root of h squared. That's a product raised to a power. So that's gonna be 1.4 squared, the square root of h squared. Okay, 1.4 squared, the square root of h squared. So d squared equals, let's see, 1.4 times 1.4 is 1.96, I think. Let's make sure, 1.4 squared, yeah, okay. The square root of h squared is h. So now I've gotten rid of the radical, but I still need to solve for h. So I'm gonna come in and divide both sides by 1.96. So my final answer, H equals D squared over 1.96. Squared, 1.96. I'm gonna go back now and I'm gonna solve it, dividing both sides by 1.4 first, just to show you that both ways work. So if my first move is to divide by 1.4, I now have D over 1.4 equals the square root of H. Next, I'm going to square both sides. So I get D squared over 1.96 equals H. So it works either way, okay? If you choose to do it this way, be careful. Don't forget you're not just squaring the radical, you're squaring each factor, okay? So be careful with that. Uh, let's see here. Here's another formula. D equals the cube root of the quantity 12V over pi. And we are to solve for V. V is locked up inside the radical, the cube root. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cube both sides. I get D cubed equals 12V over pi. So now I need to isolate V. How about if I multiply both sides by pi, which gives me pi d cubed equals 12 V. And then I divide both sides by 12. So V equals pi d cubed over 12. And I've solved for V. Okay. How about this one? R equals the cube root of the quantity A divided by P, and then outside the radical, minus one, and we are to solve for P. So 
So first thing I'm going to do is isolate the radical. So I'm going to add one to both sides of the equation. I get r plus one equals the cube root of cube root of a over p. Then I'm going to come in and cube both sides. So we get r plus one cubed equals a over p. Now, this is kind of tricky. I'm trying to solve for p. p is in the denominator, and I need to get it in the numerator. So I'm going to multiply both sides times p, which is going to give me p times r plus 1 cubed equals a. Then I'm going to come back and divide both sides by r plus 1 cubed. So I get p equals a over r plus 1 cubed. Okay. I remember the first time I did this problem thinking that they were going to want me to take r plus one and multiply it out. So you take r plus one times r plus one times r plus one. And half an hour later, you'd have the answer. And then I looked it up and I'm like, they didn't even do that. Huh. So how do you know when to do it and when not to? Well, I'm not sure. In this case, I guess it doesn't matter. The thing is, though, we have solved for p. OK. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> No, not that one. How about uh, this one? We have n squared plus 6n plus 3 to the 1 half power equals n squared minus 6n minus 3 to the 1 half power. So we have two, even though they aren't radicals, I guess we should say if we have an expression or a term with a fraction exponent, so a rational exponent, we want to isolate it, okay? But it's just like having the square root of both sides. So we've got two of those. We want them separated. They are separated. So we're going to come back and we're going to square both sides of the equation, which is going to give me n squared plus 6n plus 3 equals n squared minus 6n minus 3. Well, this is a second degree equation. And we haven't learned yet how to solve that. But fortunately for us, it's not going to end up a second degree equation. Because if I subtract n squared from both sides of the equation, now it's a first degree equation. And we do know how to solve that. We will be learning later on, I believe it's chapter 10, coming up about how to solve second degree equations. Something to look forward to besides death and taxes. All right. So we're going to add 6 in to both sides. That was pretty morbid, wasn't it? Sorry about that. 12 in plus 3 equals negative 3. Subtract 3. 12 in equals negative 6. There's much more to look forward to than those things. Divide by 12, divide by 12, n equals negative 1 half. OK, n equals negative 1 half. Let's see here. Uh, what am I looking for? Oh, I guess I want to check my work. So let's see here. If we put negative a half in for n, that's going to take more room than I've made there. Let's let's do this. Let's go like that. Let's see if we can put it right here. So we're going to have negative one half squared plus six times negative one half plus three all to the one half power equals negative one half squared minus six times negative one half minus three all to the one half power. Okay. Negative a half times negative a half would be positive one fourth. Plus six times negative a half would be plus negative six over two plus negative three or just minus three and then plus three, which would then end up being one fourth because those would reduce out. Oops, I wrote one half, sorry. Which would end up being one fourth to the one half power. Well, the square root of one is one and the square root of four is two. So the whole left-hand side simplifies down to one half once I substitute negative half in there, okay? On the right side, negative a half times negative a half is positive 
one fourth minus six times negative one half would be plus three and then minus three. So we're still gonna get one fourth to the one half power, which is gonna be one half. So the solution checks. All right. Okay, one more here just for fun. This says, let's see here. Um, let f of x equal the fourth root of x plus eight minus the fourth root of two x. Okay, find all values of x for which f of x equals zero. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take this and replace f of x with zero. So now my equation becomes zero equals the fourth root of x plus eight minus the fourth root of two x. So I have an equation with two radicals. I want to isolate those radicals. So I'm going to add the fourth root of 2x to both sides. So now I've got the fourth root of 2x equals the fourth root of x plus 8. Okay. So now I'm going to raise both sides to the fourth power. And on the left, I get 2x. And on the right, I get x plus 8. Subtracting x from both sides, x equals 8. Let's check our work and see if that's true. So 0 equals the fourth root of 8 plus 8 minus the fourth root of 2 times 8. 0 equals the fourth root of 16 plus the fourth root, or minus, excuse me, minus the fourth root of 16. Oops. Well, the fourth root of 16 is two, but even if it wasn't, isn't the fourth root of 16 minus the fourth root of 16 gonna be zero? So it checks the solution is correct. Okay, but we could also solve each of them and still come up with that. All right, so for tonight, you need to do section 9.5. Also, you should do the chapter review and then tomorrow, we will review for a test on Monday. Now, I know what many of you have been doing, and that is you wait to do the chapter review until like Sunday night or something, and that's fine, but if you wanna ask questions about it before you take the test, you need to have it finished by tomorrow. So that's the story. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.